hello hello welcome to a sunday morning upload how are you all cheers to you um if you're an oldie but goldie which i think basically 99.9% .9 of you are hello this is just gonna be a chatty video a life update if you will uh if you are new or well, this is the first video of mine you've watched my name is louise pentland i make videos about uh anything i like <laughs> basically motherhood and lifestyle typically um but there's lots of videos to go back and watch they're all of moderate to subpar production value um but enjoy them nonetheless subscribe whilst you're here thanks so much <laughs> great intro right swap my drink for my notes we haven't had a life update video in a while so i thought it was about time i'm gonna do it in categories i'm gonna do family health and then future and i would love it if in the comments below you put any little updates about yourself in those categories or if you want to go wild if you want to rebel and do your own categories that is fine but just in keeping with the video family health and future i'll get cracking because i want this to be a low edit super chatty comfy watch so let's go so in the family category liam is really well can you believe we are coming up to seven years together the joke of it is I still think of this as like a new relationship and I'm still too scared to be like oh yeah this is it forever even though like I firmly hope this is it forever. Um, we are getting married and we do have a child and we do live together so it's you know pretty committed at the moment but you know when you know when you've had a life changing breakup and then you meet someone new and people are like oh do you think this is the one and you're like well you know it's early days we'll see how we go but i like him a lot um and you know it's got potential that's where i am seven years in so yeah i'm gonna keep his contract with me another year gonna renew that um and see how we go um yeah thank you so much for all the love on the um why i'm still not married like wedding themed video i really appreciated that um i read I read all the comments at the time, I need to go back because there might be some new ones since then. Um, and the gist of it was like, do what you like. And I also went to a wedding with Liam in May and the bride and groom, Charlotte and Dan, they had like totally done like exactly what they wanted and I loved it so much. And it just really inspired me to be like, yeah, I am gonna do what I like. Um, we're going to Disney in October and I'm gonna see about like looking around and having a look at their wedding venues and like just look at what the options are there because that's something i would really like to explore a disney wedding like we had a disney engagement so we'll see but yeah liam and i are well pearly is amazing she is coming up to the end of reception now like does anybody remember when i was like guess you had a baby this week me and now like she's coming up to the end of reception time has flown it feels like do you know it feels like the blink of an eye since she was born but also it feels like a lifetime ago because we had that whole you know global pandemic thing in the middle and that feels the pandemic feels like ages ago but her birth feels like less ages ago than that like time wibbly wobbly timey wimey what's that from um she loves making things fixing things altering things like she loves attaching things uh to her clothes to her toys like embellishing stuff um she loves maths puzzles problem solving science um we took it to the science um center i was gonna say science museum i think that was the last video yeah that's linked below um and she really enjoyed that so she's loving life she's like such a big personality and i say it all the time on instagram she is just joy she's just such joy um she's very academic and yeah she's just bubbly happy and thriving darcy doodles 12 now uh, she had her birthday in april and the teenage years are like in sight um she loves sleepovers she loves dance and she loves the dancing of dance but i think she also loves like the world of dance so she likes all of her friends uh she, they've got like a little whatsapp group and it's like a really nice one as well because i'm always a bit hesitant of whatsapp groups with young people young teens um god how old do i sound when i say young people you know what i mean um she likes all of like the competitions they do and the costumes and like the camaraderie so that's lovely um yeah i've just put it here teens in sight sleepovers dance and fun um and they're both doing really well so i'll keep the family section quite short because i want to talk to you about health this is the biggest section and i don't really know like how to get into this but it's a topic that i wanted to talk about but i didn't feel confident enough to make it a full video on its own which is why i'm gonna sort of like 
touch lightly on it here and then depending on like the comments I think then I'll see about maybe doing uh, like a dedicated video to this topic but um, I stopped going to counselling about five months ago and I had been having counselling for I'll say two years but sometimes it was every week and then sometimes I would like start to kind of wean off it and do like every two weeks then once a month and then a few things came up that I was like oh this is really hard I would like to go back to twice a month or four times a month um but in January I was feeling like strong and good and I was finding that every time something difficult came up whether that was like something from the past was flashing back or something right in front of me was happening I was finding that I was able to deal with it and I was like this is so nice to be able to use the techniques and the skills I've learned in counselling and apply them to something right in front of me and to be able to handle it it doesn't mean things are have been easy but it just means they've not like completely thrown me off kilter and I've just been okay so I stopped with the counselling and that has really given my brain time to settle and like breathe a bit. Um, for a long time I think I was in like crisis mode or like survival mode or like coping mode. It's really hard to describe, very hard to describe brain things isn't it? Um, but now I just feel like I'm in just like living life mode and that's just giving me time for like things to percolate a little bit. It's actually been very healing and when something has like flashed up from childhood trauma rather than that feeling like a fire in the room like whoa it's here oh my god we are it's been much more like okay I can see that like small fire in the room and I can put that fire out and then I can think about how that started and well done me for putting that little fire out and um, we're okay like we've not got smoke damage everything's all right um, so that in the sense of healing that has been really good that that's sort of the update on that bit I don't know how to get into the next bit really um, so I had childhood trauma as you'll know if you follow for a long time if you don't my mum died I was horribly abused it was awful like a decade of awfulness um, and then I didn't really get a chance to like deal with that until probably my early 30s and then it all like came up when I had my own children I was like oh it's all flooded back blah 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 um, and I've always thought a lot of the things about my personality or my character or who I am are because of that and um, uh, when I say that, uh, <laughs> this is, why is this so hard? It makes so much sense in my brain. <laughs> um, I've always thought I'm a little tiny bit different, but I've always thought, well, I'm a little bit different because of a result of that. Before I move forward with this, I just want to say, if I use language wrong or say something wrong, please don't take it as me um, meaning to be offensive in any way. I'm just quite new to this whole topic. So over the years, I have had a lot of people ask me, Louise, do you think you have ADHD? Do you think you have, and there's so many different types of ADHD that I didn't know about, but I've been asked about. Do you think you might have AUDHD? Do you think there might be a little bit of autism there? Do you think this, do you think that? Um, I, either people have DM'd me that or messaged me that or people in real life and two people that are really high up in like mental health, um, in like the psychology field in healthcare um, who I really like rate and like value their kind of thoughts and observations have asked me that and I have been like no god no 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 and I've been so dismissive of it for a few reasons I think it's worth noting I'm 38 and I grew up in a, t a time period where at school and when we were young it was very common to hear um, really derogatory language around mental health as insults. I'm obviously not going to say it and I would urge you not to write it in the comments, but people used to say things like, oh, you such and such, you such and such, as like a jokey bants insult, but made it, it would make you think like, oh no, like having um, neurodivergence or a mental health thing, like, well, that's really like, it was very negative, right? So that's been like very deeply instilled in me. And also I just don't know a lot about those things. I was thinking of autism in a really stereotypical way. I was thinking of it either as like in the film, um, I watched, the film I used to love and watch all the time was Rain Man. And um, there's a character in Rain Man who has um, 
I think autism if he doesn't apologies but that's what I always thought um he had in that film or um I've always just thought of things like well if you're autistic it means that you can't um you can't you don't notice other people's feelings or you can't read a situation or you struggle with social interactions uh, and I was like well no because I can like I can hyper read people's feelings like I am always very aware and like I zone into it like way too much I think I'm an empath I'm a highly sensitive person um and in social environments I'm always okay I mean yes I find them a bit nerve-wracking and yes afterwards I'm exhausted and I overthink it all but I was like surely everyone feels like that um and for a lot of things I've been thinking everyone feels like that or with ADHD the other thing with that was I would be like well but I can focus for a really long time so I was thinking of ADHD as we had a few people in my school that had ADHD ADHD and they couldn't focus on their schoolwork and I was like oh but I can like I've written six books I can like zone in for hours and it's more things like that when I've said that to people like that's a sign of inattentive ADHD or all there's so much that I won't go into in this video because I want to keep this like quite light touch but so many little things that I've either gone well I was abused as a child and so now I've got these like little little foibles little things about me and that's probably a hangover from that or things I've just thought we all feel like that and then Here's the thing that's really like pff, blown my mind, TikTok. I have been watching so many, I get given TikTok videos about neurodivergence, ADHD, AUDHD, autism, and it's, it's like when you such and such and such and such, blah, 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 because of your ADHD. And I'm like, wow, that's, that's exactly me. And I've been getting those for over a year and for the first six months or so I was like meh these things are like meant to be relatable like I know social media you want to say something's relatable because then people will like, like the content or they'll share it or like that's how you get successful viral content um she says not really having ever had any <laughs> viral content but I know how it works so I was like no like people are just saying this because you know that's the name of the game and then the more it started happening and the more a few people like talk to me about it and um I've talked at length with friends and family about this and I've been like huh maybe maybe I do but I still don't know uh, I haven't had a diagnosis and I don't actually know where to start does anybody else know <laughs> like how do I even look into this I want to do it not on the NHS because it doesn't feel like an emergency and I don't know I feel a bit bad like taking up NHS time when this isn't really like negatively impacting my life I just think it'd be really nice to know so what do I do <laughs> like how do I work this out um but let me just check my notes because I feel a bit like brain scatty of where I was <laughs> um so I've always felt a bit different and put it down to childhood trauma being high maintenance the amount of ex-boyfriends I've had, I say that, I've not actually had loads of ex-boyfriends, but one ex-boyfriend used to constantly tell me I was high maintenance. You know, the one that dumped me, <laughs> I was only with him for about five months, but he was like, you're so high maintenance because it's things like, I have to have a window open when I sleep, otherwise I feel like I'm gonna suffocate. Well, obviously I'm not gonna suffocate because I'm in a room and there's air in a room, but honestly, I'll lay there being like, there's not enough air, I, I, I like, even thinking about it, you can tell I'm getting stuck. I'm like, I, I, I need a window open. Or if I'm too hot, I cannot focus. I cannot, I cannot make a decision. If a room is really messy, even though I'm a messy person, but if like in the kitchen, if all the counters are covered in things, my brain cannot cope. Like I can't make it. If all the counters have things on and someone says, what do you want for dinner? I'm like, I don't, I can't. I, all I can think is stuff everywhere, stuff everywhere, stuff everywhere. But if I just clear one counter, just the central aisle, and everywhere else is messy, I can cope. That's okay. Um, so it's things like that. And he would say, you're so high maintenance. You're so high maintenance in a really, like, negative way. Because obviously who wants to be with someone that's, like, that hard work, you know? Or I just thought it was preference, you know? Like, some people just don't like a lot of noise. Like, I like things quiet and I can't have two sounds at once. But some people just don't like noise. It doesn't mean that there's anything different about them. It's just their preference. So basically, every single little thing I have managed to like write off as like, oh, I've been talking ages. Um, I can see the time up here. Preference, childhood trauma, or 
just everyone everyone's like that surely so um what do i do about this i think the first step for me is actually talking about it i've been slowly talking about it with like trusted friends and family and it's weird because this will be there's some friends and family not saying they're not trusted but that i wouldn't feel comfortable to have this conversation with so for some people that know me in real life maybe watching this video will be the first time they've heard me talk about that um i'm not seeing you hi um but yeah i think when you're being vulnerable and opening up about something it's really easy for me to do it to a camera because it's that there's no one here until the video goes live so i feel like i can just let myself talk because i'm just talking to this like little camera but there's some people in my life that perhaps i wouldn't feel comfortable talking to this about face to face uh for all sorts of reasons but yeah i've been slowly talking about it a bit more um and I think it's interesting. I'm not viewing it anymore at all as a negative thing or a weak thing or something that you wouldn't want, which I think, I think is what my bias was before. I didn't really know that I felt that way until I was presented with the notion of could this be you? And it might, it might end up that it's not. Um, but now I just look at it as like, well, I'm short-sighted and I have to wear contact lenses. But like being short-sighted isn't weak or bad. It's just. It's just how my eyes are made like not much i can do about that um so yes if anybody has been on this journey and has had a diagnosis or like gone to get one and either didn't or did get or, like did get the art basically if you've got the answers or the answer was you don't have uh, <laughs> you know what i'm trying to say uh, how did you do that um if anyone's got any tips for me for how to even start that let me know but i think the starting point was just saying it so i've said it <sighs> let's go on to the next life update topic but that was probably like the big bit of the video there <sighs> feels a bit hard to go on to a new topic after that because even though that might have just been a bit like just a bit of chit chat in the background for you that was like such a lot <laughs> that was like oh that was such a lot that was such a lot okay <sighs> <sighs> why don't we do a little screen fade so it goes black and then comes in again so it feels like it's a new chapter here she is nice and calm okay so the final topic is going to be work slash future things um in terms of work i am loving youtube again i've really found my groove with it again i have been since february i was like right i'm gonna get back into this baby and see how we go and i remember thinking i'll give it three months and if i really am just not gelling with it i'll just let it go but it's been more than three months and i'm finding like a nice little routine um i'm enjoying i'm never gonna fully enjoy the edits but i mean i'm not hating doing the edits people might say get an editor i've had one before i can't bear it i just like to do it myself because the, if you saw the outtakes of these videos i don't want anyone to see those um and i'm really enjoying the community we have here it feels like very safe and very kind um and i don't know if i'm just very fortunate but it feels like good people here so thank you so much for always keeping this such such a nice space it's so appreciated and it allows me to gently gently open back up again so thank you for that um tiktok i am starting well i've been watching tiktok i've been a tiktok consumer for ages as you know from that last segment um but i feel like i've found how to do it now because at first i was trying to put like reels on there and now I'm like no this is much more relaxed and i feel so much more relaxed like i don't care too much about like how i look on there or like mess and stuff it just feels like less judgmental i would say i think it's less aesthetic than some of the other platforms so that's really nice um i would love to have a new podcast with you at some point this year or next i'm um, probably not going to be the same as my mother's meeting podcast probably a little bit different probably not based on motherhood um not that i don't love motherhood but you know i feel like i've done that now and i'm pretty excited about that and then if that goes well I would really like to do another Louise Live. I don't know if it's gonna be called Louise Live, but we are talking about it and not just like, we should do it, but like talking about it in terms of plans and things. And that excites me. I've got a whole thing on my phone, like every time I think of something I want to put in it, I'm writing it down. Um, so yeah, looking forward to that. That will probably be next year as well, I would imagine. I think the world, dare I say it, just feels a bit exciting again. Do you remember at the beginning of social media, I know some of you have been here since like the olden days, everything felt, felt like very new, very exciting, very fizzy, very sparkly. 
then I felt like there was a phase where things didn't feel like that and I was a bit like oh I'm not sure about this then there was the old pandemic and then it feels like I don't know I feel like that that forced people to like reassess and realign and the world feels like pretty exciting again and I feel like that old familiar like lovely fizz feels a bit back and I'm enjoying that so who knows what the future holds but I actually feel quite positive for it so that is really nice okie dokie I feel like I've chatted on enough like I said at the beginning I would love to hear any life updates you've got in the comments below maybe something big has just happened to you maybe you're looking forward to something or maybe you want to stick to those topics but let me know because I really really enjoy we've got such a good comment section um it feels like a nice community there so yeah I don't really have anything else to say um I'll put links I'll tell you what I will put in the comment uh in the description box is I might put some links to TikToks can you do that can you link TikToks that have been like really interesting ones that have been like wow yeah that's a really good point or um Instagram accounts as well I'll link it and if you're interested have a look uh but yeah no pressure for anything you know me pretty easy and I'll see you next week for another video I've got no idea what I'm gonna make maybe a Q&A maybe a little old-fashioned boots haul because I have just been to boots and bought a few bits um yeah okay <laughs> that's enough chit chat thanks for watching bye <laughs>